Simon Winchester, I met you when I was living in Hong Kong, when you were living in Hong Kong at the same time. So Hong Kong obviously is a familiar territory to you. Reasonably. I mean, I'm slightly afraid now it's been, I left, what, in 97? Things have changed. I guess the last time I was there was about 18 months ago. And Now, you've had a very long history of writing, and in fact, you, you almost stumble across writing because you're a geologist. Mm -hmm. And I think that um, um, if one was not wrong, uh, you read a book uh, by Morris mm -hmm. uh, about the Coronation Everest, called Coronation Everest, which essentially spurred you on to this idea of not only great adventure, but writing itself. Thanks to James Morris's inspiration, I first of all became a reporter in Newcastle, then I joined The Guardian, went to Northern Ireland, did all you know, the beginning of the Troubles and became somewhat notorious. And uh, there's no false modesty here, won all sorts of nice awards and things. Was sent to Washington and then Watergate happened. all happened. that was part and parcel of your writing, the idea the Yes, idea but I, I just want to make one point, which yeah. is that in 74, when I first met James, yeah. she had changed into a woman. Uh, and well, Jan yes, Morris, now yes, 91, yes, remains one of my closest friends. You then continued writing, and, and uh, you did a lot. And when I remember, you wrote for the Sunday Times as well, and uh, you, you wrote many other books. But the one book which uh, pole vaulted you into prominence was this Madman from Crowthorn, mm -hmm. uh, which has a different title in America. Uh, what is it called? What was well, it called? In, in Britain it's called, and it's a, essentially a British story, uh, it's called The Surgeon of Crowthorn. Surgeon because of the Crowthorn, fel yes. fellow that was uh, in Broadmoor Asylum, which is in Crowthorn in Berkshire, um, was a surgeon. He was trained. He was an American born in C Ceylon and uh, was uh, a surgeon in the Union Army in the Civil yes. War, and he was ordered to brand a, a letter D on the face of a deserter. This pushed him, who was questionably sane at the beginning, pushed him into terrible insanity came to England, he shot someone dead, um, and then was put in Broadmoor Lunatic Asylum. And while there, for more than 40 years, he contributed more than any other human being to the making of the Oxford English Dictionary. For James Murray. For James Murray. And so yes. James Murray up in Oxford, and W.C. Minor was the name of this unfortunate man, didn't meet until the early part of the 20th century, 1900. Uh, because he would never come, my I mean, to it any was almost a thriller because yeah. by the time he, he went to meet him, he hadn't realized that the address that he had in his hand was actually a lunar bin. No, and uh, when, when Murray went down to, to Crowthorn, horse drawn carriage took him up to this huge, imposing Victorian building. He, servants led him up to an office where there was a man there, book line study, and Murray said, I'm James Murray, the editor of the Oxford English Dictionary, and you, sir, after 25 years, must be the man I've been longing to meet. You are Dr. Minor. And this fellow said, I regret that I'm not Dr. Minor. My name is Brain, and I'm the superintendent of this building, which is a lunatic asylum, and Dr. Minor is indeed here, but I think you ought to know three things about him. He's a murderer, he's a lunatic, and he's an American. And uh, I'll take you to him directly. And these two men, almost identical in appearance, with long sort of swallowtail beards, met each other. One, you know, a highfalutin learned Scotsman, the other a murdering American soldier, united by this passion for the English language. And they remained friends until, until finally um, he, Murray, managed to get this old man, who was now in very failing health, sent back to Britain, uh, to America, where he was, where he was born. And um, the papers were signed by the young Home Secretary at the time in 1910, Winston Churchill. And so Minor went back and died in an insane asylum outside uh, New Haven, Connecticut, where he, was, um, where he grew up. It's an extraordinary story and well, true. Now, you have since also written many books. And ludicrously, your latest one has got the longest title of any book that I've ever come across. <laughs> I think, if I remember correctly, no, it's don't. called. Well, let me try. <laughs> try. I think it's a Pacific yeah. um, uh, silicon chips and surfboards, uh, coral reefs and atomic bomb, brutal dictators, fading empire, and the coming collision of the world's superpowers. Uh, Brilliant. So, a tour so de force. I, I memorized yeah. that walking across the park. Well. And um, now, what's this all about? Well, I mean, is it for. Um, for sh is it showmanship? No, it's what? my American, the, the, the British edition, which is the one that circulates in Hong Kong, is simply called Pacific, the Ocean of the Future. But the Americans give it these portmanteau subtitles for Google searching. But anyway, yes, it's a big fat book about the Pacific, and it's 
have done very well, and um, it's saying essentially that the Mediterranean was the inland sea of the classical world, the Atlantic, the inland sea of today's world, and the Pacific around an axis between, let's say, Hong Kong and San Francisco, or Shanghai and Valparaiso, is the inland sea of tomorrow's world. So let's look at it in, and I broke it down into, into 10 chapters running from the thermonuclear testing, which so polluted the Western Pacific, right up to today and this extraordinary situation which we've got in both in the South China Sea and then because of this remarkable Chinese Admiral Liu Haoqing, um, the, the, the idea that the Chinese are going to ex exercise sovereignty, at least naval sovereignty, in the thought that by 2049, the 100th anniversary of the founding of the PRC, the Chinese Navy, which is building four aircraft carriers at the moment, will have the same kind of naval equivalence in the Western Pacific that the Americans have now, has the Pentagon and Pearl Harbor worrying itself to death. My feeling is... the assumption that uh, America will stand still now. In the well, that, that's America. the big question. Anyway, all, all those uh, detail, but, and uh, all I say is that I'm, I, for one, as an old friend, am delighted you're coming back to Hong Kong. Uh, I don't know about, I don't know whether you know about the Hong Kong Book Fair, but it is the most populous, uh, popular in the world in the sense that over a week, a million visitors uh, come to see it, and that uh, at the forum you'll be able to inspire and answer a lot of uh, inquisitive questions. Well, I, I'm delighted, and not least because, I mean, it sends out a symbol that publishing, freedom of the press, hugely important in Hong Kong. I think this is a very powerful symbol of Hong Kong, as brings you back to your first question, as a, as a sort of an oasis of freedom in the great mass of China. Well, Simon Winchester, uh, we much look forward to welcome you, welcoming you to Hong Kong, and in particular, Hong Kong Book Fair. See you in July. See you in July. Thank you so much, David.